Okay, today in this video, I want to revisit that idea of odd, even, or neither with functions. Now, if you have been following me, you've already seen a video on how to find whether a function is odd, even, or neither. But I've kind of changed the way that I teach that, so I want to make a new video to match the way that I teach it in class. So, in a previous video, I talked about symmetry. And we talked about symmetry on the y-axis, and we talked about symmetry on the origin. So, when we're dealing with odd, even, or neither, if something is even, if a function is even, then we have symmetry on the y-axis. And what it means to have symmetry on the y-axis is that if you take all of the x values in the equation and replace them with negative x, and you're able to make it look like the original, then you would say that it's symmetric on the y-axis. Likewise, if you have something that is odd, it is symmetric on the origin. And if you remember from the previous video, if something is symmetric on the origin, then you have to replace the x with the negative x and you have to replace the y with the negative y as well. And then see if you can get it to look like the original. So let me hush and let me go ahead and do some examples to show you the difference between odd, even. And if it's not odd or even, then of course it's going to be the third option that's neither. So let's go to some examples and check this out. So what we have is two different types of classifications for functions. It could be even, and if it's even, that means it's symmetric on the y-axis. And to be symmetric on the y-axis means that you can replace all the x's with a negative x, and it should be the same equation. So you would take the original equation, replace all of the x's with a negative x, and it should be the same. Now, odd is symmetric on the origin. And to be symmetric on the origin, that means that you would have to replace the x's with negative x and then replace the y with negative y, and then you should have the same equation. So let's look at a function and let's see if we can classify if it's even or odd, or if it's neither one, then you would say neither. So this function, f of x is equal to 8, x squared minus 4. Now we know that you can replace the f of x with a y. I'm going to do that to start out. I'm just going to take the f of x out of the picture and put a y because I want to be able to replace the y with a negative y when we check for odd. So let me erase this and I'm going to put the original equation back up there with the y instead of the f of x. So y is equal to 8x squared minus 4. So to check for even, you have to take the x out and put a negative x into the picture. Now when I do that, if you think about what negative x squared is, that's going to be a positive. Because when you square anything, it's going to turn into a positive. So I could write this 8x squared minus 4 and it means the same thing. So because this looks like the original, I can say yes, this is an even function. I'm complete with this problem. Once I discover that this problem was even, I don't have to check and see if it's odd. It's even, it's just even. That's the end of the question. So let's try another example. Let's say f of x is equal to 5x to the third minus x. So first of all, I'm going to replace the f of x with a y y equals 5, x to the third minus x. So let's test for even. To test for even, I'm going to take all the x's in this problem and replace them with a negative x. So negative x here, negative x here. Now, negative x to the third power, that's not going to make the negative go away. So when I rewrite the problem, I'm going to take the negative out and put it in front of the 5 because it doesn't disappear like it did with x squared. And then over here, we have a negative and negative side by side. We know that turns into a positive, so I put plus x. Now, when I condense it, it doesn't look like the original problem. So I can say that this is not an even problem because I couldn't get it to look like the original problem. So I'm going to go over here and test for odd. 
Now remember, odd means that it's symmetric on the origin. That means I have to replace the y with the negative y, and then the x is with the negative x. I have to replace both of them. And then I'm gonna try to simplify this problem. So on the right-hand side, I know the negative is not gonna go away with negative x cubed, and I get five, negative five x cubed plus x, and so it doesn't look like the original, but what I can do is multiply by negative one and see if I can make it look like the original. And when I do that, the negative on the left-hand side goes away, and then the negative with the five goes away, and then the positive x turns into a negative. So therefore, it looks like the original, and it's an odd problem. So this function is odd. So I wanna try one more example. And let's do something like a rational, something that has a fraction in it. So f of x is equal to x cubed over 3x squared minus 9. So we're going to test whether this is even or odd or neither. So I'm going to replace the f of x with a y. So I put y equals x cubed over 3x squared minus nine. So first of all, to test even, take all of the x's, replace it with a negative x. And let's see if this can get back to the original. At the top, you have the negative x cubed. So we know that still remains negative because it's to the third power. But at the bottom, you have negative x squared. That becomes positive. So you got three x squared minus nine. Does this look like the original? No, because of the negative at the top. So this is not even. So let's check and see if it's odd. So I take the original problem and I'm gonna replace the y with the negative y and I'm gonna replace the x with a negative x and see if I can get it to look like the original. I know the negative x cubed at the top still remains negative and the negative x squared at the bottom turns into a positive. And this doesn't look like the original. So what I'm gonna do is try to multiply by negative one and see if it can help it get to the original. The negative goes away with the y, so that's good. And then the negative, when I multiply the fraction by negative one, you can either multiply the top or the bottom. So I'm gonna choose to multiply the top because if I multiply the top, it'll make it look like the original problem. I can't do the top and the bottom. I gotta pick one or the other. So I chose to multiply it by the top. And when I do that, it looks like the original, therefore this is an odd problem. So I hope that was a more simpler way to find the difference between odd, even, and neither functions. Um, I will see you at the next video. Bye. Have a good one.